HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. For one thing, the annual town meeting took place and you can view the whole two-day meeting right now on our website, hcam.tv. Coming up on this edition of HCAM News, two Hopkinton selectmen participated in their final meeting. Hopkinton Little League officially kicked off their season with the annual parade. Hopkinton High School teachers take on the students in the Relay for Life basketball game, and we get you up to date with the latest in Hiller's sports. But first, school resource officer Phil Powers was recognized by the Board of Selectmen after he received a prestigious award. You know, it's nice to have uh, Phil recognized by an outside agency such as the Massachusetts Police Officers Association. Uh, he received the SRO Exceptional Service Award. So his uh, duties and what he's done to this town have gone past the borders of Hopkinton where he's made an impression on uh, his peers in other communities. Phil has uh, been an SRO for 16 years in this town. Um, since I've been here, I've heard nothing but praise from the school administrators, staff, students, Phil knows what it is to be an SRO. It's not all about being a police officer at the school. It's about helping kids understand what police do, building relationships, building the trust between uh, the staff and the, uh, the kids. And Phil has certainly done that. He's uh, foiled a few parties in his days because of information and things of that uh, nature. But he's also helped a lot of kids up there. He's always been there for me when we had a, you know, any type of controversial issue or things that have come up. He's, uh, he's got a wealth of knowledge, and I'm certainly glad that he's being recognized for that. One of the biggest things that Phil does, is, which is a priority of mine, is school safety. And uh, school, uh, Phil is an active member of the school uh, safety team, and he spearheaded a lot of stuff there. Uh, certainly active shooter training, the ALICE program, uh, shelter in place, always holding drills, and uh, keeping people on their toes and uh, vigilant. Um, I, I'm certainly uh, very appreciative of all the hard work he's done, and uh, certainly hope he's going to stay around for a few more years, because he'd certainly be a tough SRO to replace, but I'd just like to congratulate him on his award. Officer Powers, welcome. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh. Yeah, I've been here 29 years and 16 of the years uh, working in the schools, and it's been a great job. I love working with the kids. Um, being a police officer, you don't get a lot of, um, see a lot of good in the job, but certainly as the SRO, you do see a lot through the children and the, uh, the parents in the town. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Congratulations. Great job, Phil. Good work. Also at the Selectman meeting, two Hopkinton Selectmen recently participated. In their last meeting, Selectman Chair Ben Paleko and Selectman John Mosier will be stepping aside after two three-year terms with the board. Their Selectman colleagues had many kind words for the longtime town volunteers. Do we have anyone here for public forum this evening? To start the selectmen meeting, three selectmen took to the public forum podium to thank selectman chair Ben Paleko and selectman John Mosier for all the hard work they have done for the town as they entered their last selectman meeting. Um, right thank you for your service to the town. This is your last meeting uh, as a selectman, at least this term. Uh, perhaps there's a future term in there, I don't know. But uh, we did want to say thank you on behalf of the community for everything you've done. Excellent job, and you will be missed. 
as will your colleague, Mr. Mosier, who's already yes. missed since he's not here this evening. Yes, yes, yes. But he'll be here in a little bit. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you, sir. Very kind of you. You're just good sitting up there by yourself there. That's great. You turn red. It's awesome. Now, because I, I did this a few weeks ago. Okay. Uh, ben Durley, thank you very much. You really put your, your whole heart into, um, into guiding the town this year and the previous five years. And, and um, um, I just want, want to say thank you, and you really did a great job. You took a lot of heat and, to, and, and took a lot of heat for us. And thank you very much for it. John, thank you so much. Todd Sestari, 19 Elizabeth Road. Um, you know, Ben, it, first of all, it's unfortunate that John's not here right now, but uh, I know that we'll all have personal words with John as well later. But uh, it's been six years on the board with you, and uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. Um, I feel like we've gone through a bit of a war together, or at least a battle. Yeah. The battles, we haven't always been on the same side of the field, um, but, uh, but it's been enjoyable. I feel like I've learned a lot from you. Uh, you were always great at addressing the elephant in the room uh, when other people hesitated, and that certainly uh, made other people feel more at ease, including myself, to really say what was on our minds at the same time. Uh, your service as selectman has been uh, fantastic. I know that you've had service for the town. You've given service to the town in the past as well, uh, not to mention the service that you've given to your country. So uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, and uh, best wishes. So, you guys are the best. I know, that, I know that you won't be fully detached. So, uh, good luck, though. Thank you so much. You guys are terrific. Thanks. Thank you. And then at the end of the meeting, John Mosier and Ben Paleko said their final goodbyes. Um, just because uh, Mr. Mosier was, was missing earlier in the meeting, I'm just going to pretend that I'm a liaison from the Board of Selectmen to the Board of Selectmen. And uh, Mr. Mosier, it's been a pleasure w uh, working with you on the board for the last six years. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've enjoyed the time. You've brought an incredible amount of energy and dedication to all the committees, subcommittees that you've worked on. And uh, I appreciate the time that uh, we've been able to be on the board together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Todd. It's been a pleasure. Um, when we went to public session earlier this evening, uh, John, Todd, and I got up and went over there. We left Ben sitting up here by himself. Uh, and then we proceeded to laud him for which a little bit Which at this point you're happy. So. He turned a little bit red, which is kind of fun to watch. Uh, I'm sorry you weren't there for that, too. Um, I think we all expressed some heartfelt thanks to him and to you and even your absence uh, for a great job over the last six years. And uh, you guys have done an awful lot for the community. You know that. We know that. The community knows that. And, uh, you know, you're going to be missed. I hope you're not a stranger. And... Hopefully we can call on you because there's going to be some things that we're going to need some help on uh, moving forward as we constitute a new board. But I think you did a great job, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. I don't have any future board agenda, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. It's but tough I, to have no future. I would, it's tough to have no future, but I would like to take a few seconds and uh, thank each and every one of the members of the board of selectmen that I've served with in the past and that I currently serve with. Deeply appreciative of the camaraderie and the effort. Um, and the sacrifice that you've all put into the town. Um, it's been a pleasure working with all of you. I've learned a lot from each one of you. Ben, I, I feel it was, uh, I don't know, serendipity or something. You and I came out at the same time, and, and we'll go off at the same time. Um, but I feel like I was very fortunate with the members that I've served with in exciting transitional times within the town. And um, for anybody that hasn't volunteered for the town, I would strongly suggest it. Uh, laying the other night kind of going through my head some of the things that I've worked on over the last few years and honestly I don't know whether the town got more out of it or whether I did um, because it's, it's challenging but deeply rewarding and if if you keep an open mind and listen with an open ear um, you'll get a lot out of it as a person it has been great it's been a great experience you've been a great bunch of folks to work with I've really enjoyed myself uh, it's it's been rewarding it's been uh, gosh it's been interesting um, like you said, John, the, the, the great thing about, there's so many good things about public service, but, but it is that you get, to, you get to work on big issues, right, things that really matter. You get to make the town a better place, hopefully, and, and, and have a hand on influencing how it becomes a better place. And you, you pick up some things yourself along the way. Tip of the cap to Selectman Ben Paleko and Selectman John Mosier. They dedicated many hours of their time and worked very hard 
to help the Hopkinton community throughout their years with the board. On Friday, May 13th, starting at 6 p.m., it's time for the Hopkinton Relay for Life to help in the fight against cancer. Recently, Hopkinton High School students and teachers took to the basketball courts for a friendly game to help benefit the great cause. Hopkinton High School students and teachers battled it out on the basketball courts to help benefit the Relay for Life. First quarter, the teachers had the 18-13 lead. Principal Bishop came up big in the paint. Assistant Principal Josh Hanna got in on the action in the second quarter, but the students would strike back in the second half. The students ended up being too much offense for the teachers to handle and took the game 47-38. All right, uh, talk about the game out there, big uh, win against the staff, you, got, you guys pumped, you got some bragging rights. Yeah, you know, uh, it was a hard fought game out there, we were really grinding the whole time and uh, you know, it just took real teamwork and uh, Spurs ball, mo ball movement to get it done, but you know, after we came through, we're, uh, we're really excited about it and uh, you know, we uh, show our respect to the teachers because uh, we know they played a tough game too and um, you know, just a great group of guys. All right, did you, did you guys have uh, faith that you were going to win that game? Oh, yeah, we knew from the tip. You know, um, it was tough with the referees going the other way. I think there was uh, probably some money exchanging hands there. But, you know, yeah, yeah, we were we were sure we had the dub. All right, you guys been having uh, practices to get ready for this day? Um, you know, uh, that's um, classified information. Um, it's not allowed. But, you know, uh, we had to assure the win. So, you know, we had to um, become one. All right, and a great cause here today to Relay for Life. Oh yeah, you know, um, I'm actually on the publicity subcommittee, so if you want to follow our Instagram and our Snapchat, that would be great. Um, you know, it's a great cause and uh, trying to raise as much money as possible. All right, do you know uh, any other ways people can help out? Um, yes, actually, uh, if you want to go to RelayForLife.org, sign up, make a team, and you know, just, you know, raise, like I said, raise as much money as possible for a great cause. You know, we're just trying to, you know, end cancer. That's what that's the goal. Absolutely. All right. Thanks a bunch. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. A lot more to come on HCAM News, including Hiller's Sports and a look at the Hopkinton Little League kickoff parade. And Courtney will let you know everything coming up on our HCAM channels with the insider. You're locked into HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Little League season kicked off with the annual parade. HCAM's Mike Terosian was on the scene and caught up with Hopkinton Little League president Fran DeYoung. Today is the uh, opening day parade, annual tradition for over 50 years in Hopkinton. What we've done with it is actually expanded it. So you've got grandparents, parents. Here at the new fields, we spent a lot of time prepping the diamond, and it's our annual kickoff. The long, young ones, the older ones, and a lot of recognition that we do. It's a really fun day for everybody associated with Hopkinton. 
So I see you changed it up a little bit and you got a little fun stuff that's happening after this. We do, we do. A couple years ago, one of the uh, one of the directors said, hey, come on out and, and what can we do to keep the kids around a little bit longer? So we've done a home run derby, we do run around the bases, we do face painting, uh, and just make it almost like a little bit of a picnic. We've got the doghouse open, people can eat the food. Um, it's one of those things where Parents really love it, keeps their kids running around, and the kids love to do it, they play with their friends. All right, so uh, how many kids are in Little League right now? This year we're actually about 725. We've actually kept the numbers pretty steady over the last three or four years, and it's really a tribute to the parents and coaches that participate. Uh, it's one of those things where a lot of other towns have competing interests with soccer, with lacrosse. Hopkinton continues to maintain a very strong baseball program and softball program. Now myself, I personally appreciate you staying in the league because I was in, I think, for five years after my oh, kids yeah. aged out, right? So my question is, how can people get involved with Little League? Uh, that's a great question, right? Oftentimes we look at parents, we look at coaches, anybody who's interested in kind of trying to give back, my contact information is on the website. In fact, we've automated everything on the website these days. So if, a rain, if there's a rain delay, you don't call a hotline anymore, you get a text notification. It's amazing what technology's done, but there's easy ways to contact myself or other members of the board. Love to have new people on the board or help with the field crew. That's something that's been relatively new probably since you were here. I have a team of about six to 10 guys that come out every Saturday morning, prep field, do this work that you see here today. So it's been a huge help for me. One, two, Three. Whoa. Very good. Good job, everybody. Congratulations. Thank you, Jordan. Good job. Always a fun event to kick off the Little League season. Good luck to all the players and coaches. Hiller's baseball is starting to pick up some momentum. Recently, they took on their arch nemesis rival, the undefeated 5 and 0 Ashland Clockers. Could the Hillers give Ashland their first loss of the season? See for yourself. Hopkinton Hillers and Ashland Clockers rivalry match in Hilltown. Bottom of the third, two runners on, no outs. Jeff Haller with a little harmless bunt. Bunt is in fair territory, slow roller, throw to first, and he'll get by the first baseman, and the runner from third will come around and score. It's one to nothing, Hillers. Oops, not so harmless. Two on now, and Jack Vacari takes advantage of the situation. The ground left side, nice field, nicely fielded on the hop, but the throw in is going to be late and the run will score. One out now, Alex Reynolds keeps things rolling. Left hand the pitch and this is hit in the air towards left field and that is gonna drop down for a base hit. One runner being waved around and the other runner right behind him. Here's the third run, here is the fourth run. It is a two run base hit for the Hillers. 4-0 Hillers, but not for long. Ashland strikes back on the top of the fourth. Two on, no outs for Mitch Porter. Delivers. And this is hit in the air to deep center field towards the fence. That'll drop in for a base hit. That is going to be a ground rule double. The ground rule double scores one, and then this happens. That is up the middle past the reach of Otzi. Picked up by the shortstop, throw to first. And they do get the out at first, but a run does score. Otzi delivers. This is up the middle. Otzi will love it. Throw to first. And they get the out. Now the throw home. Not in time. And Ashlyn comes up with their third run of the ball game. Mitch Porter flies down the line. No runs would score again until the top of the sixth. Michael Krupe at the plate with two on. Does this. And this is hit into left field, past the reach of LeBlanc, and the game tied run will score. And now the lead run being waved around. He will score as well. It's 5 to 4, Ashland. 5 4, Ashland. Hillers down to their final six outs. Two on, one out for Drew Simi in the bottom of the six. It, in the air, it is in fair territory. Over to right field, it's caught. Runner's going to tag from third. The throw home is going to be over his head, and it's a tie ball game. And then after that, this happens. For Ashland, as this is tattooed into left field, that'll drop down. Runner being waved around, and the Hopkinton Hillers retake the lead. Six to five. Oh RBI single for Alex Reynolds. The Hillers get the miraculous 6-5 win, 
and hand Ashland their first loss of the season. Alex Reynolds was the star of the game, going three for four at the plate with a double and three RBIs. The next day, the Hillers kept the winning trend going as they defeated Bellingham 7-4. Hopkinton now stands at 3-2 overall on the season. A great win by the Hillers baseball team. The Hillers stand at four wins and three losses after the month of April and are towards the top of the TVL standings. After an 0-2 start to the season, Hillers softball is also starting to get on a roll. Recently, the Hillers bats got going early against a very good Bellingham team. 3-3 three three Hillers softball met up with 3-2 Bellingham. The Hillers got the offense heated up in the first inning. This is hit in the air to center field, and that is deep and will drop down for a base hit. And the run being waved around from third, the throw in is not going to be in time, and it is 1-0 Hillers. An RBI double for Isabel Holden. This is towards third base side. It's fair territory right down the line. And it's going to be a base hit as it rolls in the left field. A run scores. And Will Zell is over at second base with an RBI double. 2 nothing Hillers. Clear deals. On the ground up the middle. Fielded by, and bobbled by the second baseman. Throw to first is good, but a run does score. So Molly Bennett gets the sacrifice. And it's 3 nothing Hillers. Will Zell comes around. Runners on second and third, two outs, three runs in for the Hillers, bottom of the first. Larry deals. This is it in the air. That'll drop into right field. One run in a score. Another run being waved around, and she will come in as well. A two-run base hit for Katie Holly, and it is five to nothing, Hillers. Five runs scored in the first inning, and that would be enough for the Hillers to take down Bellingham. Hopkinton got the 12-2 victory. Bree Mirabli pitched six innings and struck out 13 hitters while giving up two runs on three hits. Heather Hawley was a star at the plate, going three for four, driving in three runs and scoring a run herself. Following this game, the Hillers won three more as they took down Dover, Sherborne, Millis, and Medway. Hopkinton softball is now 7-3 on the season and on a five-game winning streak. You can see a whole lot of Hillers sports airing soon on the HCAM channels. Speaking of programming on HCAM, Courtney Taylor is standing by to let you know everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, May 6th at 8pm, Connor Deegan shares why he is running for town clerk on Hopkinton Coffee Break. I decided I wanted to go and see if I could pursue something in municipal government. So I basically just started from scratch, mm -hmm. and I decided to come back to Hopkinton. Where else better to look than my hometown? On Monday, May 9th at 7 p.m., Richard Fox reads poetry inspired by his life experiences on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I am grateful for every year of Dad's life. Thanks offered as I plunge into flashes of yearning, grace, surrender to what was, what is, what will be. On Tuesday, May 10th at 7 p.m., HCAM is hosting a town election debate where you can learn more about each candidate live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, May 11th at 11 a.m., the Little League Parade strolls through town on a new HCAM News Focus. On Thursday, May 12th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Sunday, May 15th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from May 9th will air. If you want more insights on what goes on here at HCAM, just visit hcam.tv connect to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know what's happening in town, then check out our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. 
That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website HCAM.TV as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website HCAM.TV you can view video of the entire Hopkinton annual town meeting as well as all the results from the 52 articles that were discussed. Also, don't forget that Monday, May 16th is Town Election Day and there are seven contested races. Be sure to get out and vote for who you want to help run our community. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thank you for watching.